Hey guys, Dan here. Today we'll talk about the Pocorni Engineering Hyperwheel. So this is a DIY steering wheel that you can just build yourself and it's really very easy to do. I'll do a quick review. I'll talk about how difficult everything is and hopefully answer all the questions that you maybe have. Also, I did the whole build of this live on stream. So if you want to watch it, there's a playlist with all the three parts of the build. It's took me like six, seven hours, maybe a bit more. Like it always takes a bit longer while streaming, but the whole thing has been built while live on stream. So if you want to watch that, just check the playlist out. So we'll start with the two most asked questions. Is it hard to do and how much does it cost? First of all, is it hard to do? No, not at all. I think everybody that can hold a screwdriver can put this wheel together. It's really not difficult. There's a little bit of soldering involved, but soldering is not hard. Practice it a little bit. Soldering irons don't have to be super expensive. You can get decent ones for less than 100 euros. I can recommend the TS80 or TS101. I'll put links in the description. But it's really, it's not hard to do. And if you really want to build it, I'm pretty sure everybody can do this. When you buy the files, you get everything. You get the parts that you can 3D print. You don't need a 3D printer. You can also order the files at JLC, for example. That's what I did, even though I have a printer. But it's just like the print quality of those industrial printers is just better than the stuff that you have at home, at least the stuff that I have at home. And it's not super expensive. But if we go through the list here, you can see the wheel cost me a little more than 800 euros and that is for one unit with a lot of parts sourced directly from Pocorni. So I went with the full carbon kits with those silicon grips. They feel very nice. It's more on the thinner side, but the grips feel great. Then I also got the button caps from Pocorni. I did 3D print a little diffuser because they are typically clear, but I think there are new buttons coming with a little more diffusion. But if you go with the old style, you can just like either take a little bit of sandpaper on the bottom side and, and make it a bit less see-through so you get a better diffused light. Or I just printed a very, very thin diffuser out of white PLA. You can do that. Then front glass is this part here, 24 euros. The stickers I also got from Pocorni. The thumb rotary knobs I got from them. I use GSI knobs for, for those here because I think they look better. Um, but you can also source these from Pocorni, also 3D print. So if you get them from there, well, it costs a little bit more. I actually ordered two funky knobs, but I didn't install them because I like the red ones from GSI a bit better here. Then for the Plex inserts, that is the diffuser below the sticker for euros. The PCB I ordered from JLC PCB. So that is more like the part PCB plus DigiKey because the PCB from JLC comes without the buttons, without the encoder. So you have to solder that in yourself. If you don't want to do that, you can also order a ready-made PCB from Pocorni, already programmed, uh, just plug and play it pretty much. Then I had several stuff from AliExpress like screws or magnets or these little things for the shifters roughly 90 euros, the Vocor 60 euros, then the 3D printed files, if you don't print them yourself, I ordered them from JLC. I paid around 105 euros for that. And then the manual and the files that you need is 45 euros from Pocorni. That makes a price of 680.9 euros and plus taxes here in Germany, it's roughly 810. I mean, there's still some little stuff that comes on top of that. But you can definitely build this for well below 1000 euros. You can also do it cheaper. For example, if you find more people that are interested in the wheel, the more volume you order, the cheaper it gets, obviously. But that is the price that I paid. So if we look a bit at the wheel, it is a very nice wheel. It's not as rigid as the full aluminum body wheels, but there also is an aluminum body now available from Pocorni. The version that I have here is the sandwich design with a carbon fiber front, then the 3D printed shell, carbon fiber rear, and that is held together by, by spacers. It is definitely more than rigid enough. Absolutely no complaints here. But if you want even more premium, you can go with the aluminum body. In general, this does not compare to wheels like Usher or Grit or GSI. In terms of build quality, obviously there are 3D printed parts involved, but it's also significantly cheaper. I mean, you can also buy very well-made professional wheels from Moza or Simagic for probably less than what you pay for this. But then you don't get SimUp support, you don't learn in the process. And I think DIY is not really a lot about saving as much money as possible, at least not on this wheel. It's more like if you like doing it and you learn something in the process, then go for it. I definitely had tons of fun putting this together and can highly recommend it to anyone. But if we have a look at the wheel, 
We have 10 push buttons on the front, 250 gram actuation force, I think. They feel decent. Um, there are definitely buttons that are harder to push, but I don't think it's really necessary to have buttons that are basically impossible to push. Full RGB support via SIM hub. There's a little Arduino, well, a virtual Arduino inside, so you can have whatever color you want, or you can, for example, if we go to SIM up here, RGB LEDs, for example, this profile here gives you a crazy light show on the wheel. You can, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. There's tons of stuff possible. It reacts to telemetry, like for example, flag overlays or spotter left, right and everything. So this is really, really well done. Unfortunately, it doesn't come as a device in SimHub. You have to use the Arduino section, but I think for a DIY wheel, this is definitely more than acceptable. In the end, it does exactly the same. The only difference is you're not in the device section here, you're under Arduino. But the customization is exactly the same that you can do. Then it also has a five inch Volcore display, which actually is in the device section because this is where the displays are and you can show whatever you want here. You can show a cube dash, the GSI dash, lovely dashboard, whatever you want. I like the GSI one, so we'll go to that. There's a glass on top of it, so the touchscreen will not work most likely. In some instances it can work, but on my case I didn't have any success with it. But yeah, five buttons on the front. Then we do have two thumb rotaries. Resistance is pretty good. Same for the front rotaries, which also have a push button. Pokorny uses the Borns PEC11 type encoder here, both for front encoders and for the thumb encoders. That is like a good medium option in terms of resistance. Definitely no complaints here from me. Then we also have two funky switches. The position is maybe slightly lower than what a perfect position would be for me, but it's still in a very good position, to be honest. I've definitely had wheels with way more awkward position of the funky switches. This here is just a sticker, so this doesn't do anything. It just, I mean, I put on the sticker for brake bias and TCO, whatever that means, just so there are stickers on the wheel. And then on top we have shift lights, 3103 configuration with a nice diffused white cover within the glass, so the illumination looks good. And the grips also are very, very comfortable. I would still say they are relatively thin grips, but it's probably... Maybe together with the Grid MPX, the most comfortable wheel that has thin grips. So I think Pokorny did a really good job with these. I can highly recommend to get the grips because I think the grips is probably the scariest part for DIY. So I just went with the with the nicely available silicon grips without having to worry how I can make grips myself. Then this part here and the part in the bottom is just glued on top of the carbon fiber plate and it hides the screws. You don't need to put it there but I thought it looks pretty cool. As you can probably tell, this wheel is definitely inspired by the Cosworth wheel found in many prototypes, hypercars, and overall, I really, really like it. If we look at the backside, then we see we have tons of inputs here, actually. I went with the 3D printer shifters. You can now order aluminum shifters. I mean, those are obviously higher quality, but also drive the price up quite a bit. These are definitely more than okay. I mean, you can see there's some slight play on the shifters here. You do not get the perfect shifter with 3D prints. I mean, I think you can probably add like a little washer here to reduce the play. But honestly, like if you really look at this, this looks worse than it actually is. Like while driving, you never really notice it. The resistance with the magnets that I put in here, see, I put one magnet, one set of magnets on the top shifters and then two on the bottom, which gives a slightly higher resistance. Feels very good. I didn't measure it, but it feels great. The clutches are also very, very high resistance um, and they also feel good. The reach for my hands works well. It is a little far away. If you have tiny hands, you struggle maybe a bit with it. But then again, this is a DIY wheel. You can just customize it yourself and reduce the throw a little bit. But the default works very, very well for me. Then we also have, similar to the Grid MPX, two buttons on the rear. I think this is a clever idea to get some extra inputs. I mean, I have no idea what to do with six buttons on the rear, but I guess it also doesn't hurt to have. And then one thing that is slightly annoying, the shifters are relatively far on the inside, so it does not clear a SimMagic QR. I had to 3D print a little spacer, 13 millimeters, to get the clearance that is needed for the SimMagic ring, but I also 
I had to do it anyways because I didn't want to drill a hole in the carbon fiber because carbon fiber dust is super, super bad for you. So I just went with the connector, go inside the QR, and then I'm using my own Dan Suzuki QR to connect to the base and have USB and power on the wheel. But yeah, that's pretty much it, what I wanted to say about the wheel. I think it's a great thing if you want to learn how to make a steering wheel, if you have fun in DIY. I mean, don't expect the build quality to be on the same level as something like Usher or some other premium manufacturers. It is definitely a bit less than that because there are 3D prints involved. They just don't look as good as CNC aluminum. You don't get the same tolerances and there will be a little bit more play. Also, the wheel itself does have a tiny bit of flex. But honestly, like a lot of it is coming from the QR actually, and this is nothing that you really notice while driving. It's mine. If you if you sit here and, and try this, yeah, it will flex, but every wheel will flex, especially every wheel that has the silicon grips molded on top of carbon fiber. It is a bit better if the grips are molded on top of aluminum, but this is carbon fiber, but many other wheels mold on top of the carbon fiber. So this is not really worse than other comparable wheels with a similar build. But yeah, I mean, I had tons of fun. I'm not gonna keep this wheel because I have way too many wheels. So you probably won't see me using it in the future, but I had a lot of fun putting this together. It was a lot of fun to build this live on stream. We might do more of these Pokorny engineering builds because I think the streams like were pretty popular. I guess people enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below if you would love to see more of this stuff. We could also design our own projects, like I was thinking to make a little button box that you can 3D print, maybe a carbon fiber front plate so it looks pretty, and then a custom PCB that you can get made at JLC or something. I think I want to explore a little bit more this DIY niche because I think it sits very well together with sim racing. But yeah, just let me know in the comments down below if you would love to see more content like this. That's pretty much it for the wheel. If you have any questions, again, comments or join the Discord. We have a separate channel for the DIY section, for example, for this wheel specifically, but also like general stuff. So maybe just join the Discord, say hi and ask there. And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye bye.